Hi everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Lawrence Lai. I'm the uh, moderator for today's uh, panel discussion. Uh, I work for FutureWay Technology, which is a U.S. subsidiary of uh, Huawei Technology. I'm also the chair of um, Outreach Committee of Soda Foundation. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, SodaCon today. Uh, today our, our um, panel discussion, uh, uh, the topic, the main topic is large enterprise end user perspective on um, container and multi-cloud data storage management. Um, we have about, I think it's 45 minutes uh, for this uh, panel discussion. Uh, so we may not have enough time to go through some of the details and technical or requirements. Uh, but I, I hope by the end of this uh, uh, session, uh, you will have some good understanding, at least on the high level, uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, container and data storage, man uh, multi-cloud data storage management. Um, so without further ado, I uh, please join me to welcome our panelists, three panelists today. Uh, so I'll introduce, uh, make introduction one by one, and so they can, I'll ask them to do a self-introduction. Uh, first, I'll welcome uh, Kondo Tomoko-san from SoftBank. Kondo-san, please okay. introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Larry san Hello, everyone. I am Tomoko Kondo from SoftBank. I am very happy to share this time uh, in real space and a virtual space. I work in the cloud engineering division and the enterprise product and business division as a senior technical manager. I am in charge of developing solutions on multi-cloud services and promoting open source technology. As a cloud engineer, developing solution patterns that each industry's challenges as a business planner. As one attempt, we would like to consider a system that can efficiently process data distributed in an on-premise environment as virtual storage on the cloud via SoftBank private network using Soda technology. We can connect all major cloud and internet and a mobile network. Customer can connect all cloud and cloud data by any place. In the future, we would like to create a world where data collected in real time on the cloud and on-premise data can be handled transparently. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, kono -san, for the okay. self-introduction. Uh, next uh, panelist is uh, uh, Konayagi uh, Teru. Teru. Huh? That's okay. Koyanagi. <laughs> Koyanagi. <laughs> yeah. Thank sorry, you, Rally. Sorry, sorry. Uh, from Toyota Corporation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Teruo Koyanagi, and I'm working at Toyota Motor Corporation. Uh, I'm a research and development uh, of the back-end uh, systems for connected cars, uh, which is uh, mainly uh, running on the uh, cloud services. Uh, so uh, under to Toyota's connected cars are sending a large amount of data uh, to, the, to that cloud system. Uh, for example, uh, I mean the data, uh, the car status data uh, called uh, CAN data, CAN data, and uh, uh, vid also the video images captured by the uh, camera systems in the car. Uh, we are expecting more than ex exabytes of data uh, will be sent from uh, the 20 million uh, connected cars uh, in uh, 2025. Uh, uh, so one of our issue is uh, the, the, uh, the how to store uh, such a large amount of data with minimal cost with uh, respecting the legal, uh, legal regulations. Uh, yes, uh, that's my introduction. Thanks. 
Thank you. Thank you, Korean uh, Ajisang. Next, uh, but not the least, is uh, Harada uh, Kazuaki san from yes. uh, NTT Communications. Yes, thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Kazuaki Harada from NTT Communications. Uh, NTT Group is well known uh, in Japan as uh, telecommunica uh, telecommunication and telephone company. Uh, our company mainly operates uh, optical fibers networks and uh, data centers. Uh, in addition, uh, we are developing services uh, that will make internet use more convenient. Uh, for example, uh, we issue IoT SIM cards, uh, which allow customers to connect directly to their network uh, or use our IoT platform to aggregate data and uh, combat protocol. Uh, my main task is uh, to operate uh, the infrastructure uh, using uh, Kubernetes and GPUs. Uh, In-house AI engineers uh, using uh, this uh, infrastructure uh, to conduct uh, machine learning and video analysis. And uh, besides operating the Kubernetes cluster, uh, I am also responsible for uh, promoting container technology uh, within the company. Our, uh, one of our vision is to develop uh, smart data platform uh, we call SDPF. Uh, it provides a solution for data utilization uh, from data collection and uh, storage to management and analysis. Uh, the IoT platform uh, mentioned earlier is the also part of the SDBF menu. Uh, thank you for having me today. Thank you, Arasa, for the self-introduction. Uh, so because time limitation, I have uh, prepared four questions uh, for panelists to, to help answer. Uh, uh, let me go to the first one. Um, so first question is, uh, we hear various analysis uh, industrial uh, reports saying that uh, container application deployments are growing rapidly, exponentially. And based on these reports, uh, it's the public belief that uh, the container storage and data management is in, is in high demand. And do you see uh, the same, do you agree with that? Do you see the reflection of this trend? Uh, in your either uh, demand from customer or in uh, use cases. Uh, what is your view on that? Uh, let's uh, go back to uh, Kondo-san, if you, if you can help us uh, uh, ex uh, explain your view on this, that'd be great. Thank you. platform Sina in October this year. Sorry, okay. Uh, my crowd is large. Okay. Yeah. Sina is a platform service that allows even application developers with no knowledge of infrastructure to easily prepare an infrastructure environment by themselves. From an infrastructure perspective, CNAP is designed to support accelerated development with DevOps by automating infrastructure as code and its operations. Its foundation is based on a consideration of various cloud services and OSS, with Kubernetes at its core. But I think we have to research in advanced method. In the future, I think it will be necessary to incorporate a mechanism that allows the transparent handling of data without application developers being conscious of it. 
even in the Sina platform. I think SODA is a useful technology that enables transparent handling of data in container application too. Thank you. Thank you, Kono san, for answer question and also uh, introducing uh, your scene up your uh, platform for container. Uh, let's uh, next go to uh, uh, Koyanagi san. Uh, can you uh, share your uh, view uh, on container development deployment? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, uh, currently the container technologies are, are often used. Uh, we we also using the container technology in our applications. Uh, uh, and the, in the research point of view, uh, the cost optimization for uh, storing with the data is one of the requirement for us. And uh, there are many storage products uh, which have different properties. So we need to mix them uh, to uh, for, the, for the optimization. Uh, but uh, if the migration cost between products becomes larger, it is more difficult for us to apply uh, optimization to the applications. Uh, the best is uh, that we are able to choose the product without changing the application code. So uh, I mean that uh, the compatibility is one of uh, the important things for us to uh, optimize the storage cost. Uh, it is good um, that we can use the de facto standard uh, for the container technology to different applications, uh, something like Kubernetes, and it provides a common interface for storages. We may be able to implement such a, uh, uh, such optimization, cost optimizations behind the common interfaces. That's my view for container technology uh, in data management. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Koyanagi san. Uh, next, let's go to Harada san. Can you also share your view on container de deployment? Sure. Uh, according to MJG Commons survey, uh, only 10 to 20 percent of data files uh, of the files uh, stored on the uh, on file servers are uh, hot data. Uh, frequently uploaded uh, or uh, referenced, uh, uh, sorry, updated or referenced, uh, while most files are called data. Uh, that is uh, rarely referenced. Uh, while most files are called data, uh, that is rare, uh, sorry, uh, most uh, files are called data, uh, which are usually never referenced. Uh, expanding storage for such uh, data at great expense would be too wasteful. Uh, we use uh, Wasabi as a storage uh, destination for our ever-increasing container data. Uh, Wasabi is an S3 compatible object storage uh, that is 70% cheaper than uh, competing services and, and uh, there are no communication fees. Uh, besides, using NetApp public pool, uh, we can transfer hot data to NetApp and uh, uh, we can, uh, uh, could, uh, sorry, uh, core data can be transferred to uh, Wasabi automatically. Uh, this storage uh, reduces the cost of data retention. Um, in addition, our data center offers the Wasabi region, uh, which allows us to uh, achieve high performance uh, when our customer use Wasabi. Of course, uh, there are some uh, use, ca uh, use case uh, where someone cannot apply object storage and uh, require specific uh, storage appliance, uh, but uh, we hope this will be helpful. Uh, that's it, thank you. Uh, thank you, Harada san for sh uh, sharing your view on the container deployment, also some uh, uh, actually uh, detailed implementation uh, entity communication is using today. Uh, so let me uh, go to my next question. Um, so my next question is, uh, uh, when we talk about overall scenario of application development, uh, I think cloud-based deployment, especially multi-cloud uh, deployment, 
is uh, uh, very become very very important and that cannot be ignored. And more and more deployment uh, are based on cloud, especially multi cloud. Uh, it's really growing strongly in the context of uh, increasing uh, container development uh, deployment and the cloud deployment. Do you see container based uh, the application deployment in cloud, multi, especially multi cloud, growing? Um, uh, please share your insight on this. Uh, let's go back to Kondasan. I believe that the development of container apps in the cloud will further accelerate in the future. I think one of the attractions of container is that it is very lightweight, efficiently, and easy to develop in the cloud. Our container development environment, CNAP, also combines management with CRD, a managed cloud service to create an infrastructure that manages everything in years as code. With a Kubernetes mani manifest, we also employ Flux CD, which monitors events that occur in Git remote repositories and applies manifest managed in Git repositories to configure a CD environment using only Kubernetes. In the future, for container apps that handle highly real-time data, such as IoT data, that is collected and proceed in multiple cloud. It is very important to consider how to provide a mechanism that allows transparent access to data from any container in any cloud. Thank you. Thank you, Kono-san, uh, for sharing your thoughts on the uh, multi-cloud multi deployment, especially for container. Uh, yeah, let's go back to Toyanagi san uh, if you can uh, help share some of your insights as well. That'd be great. Yep. Uh, so multi-cloud strategy is important for us also or because uh, of the legal issue. Uh, such as GDPR in Europe, CCPA in US, and cybersecurity law in China, we need to store the data in the local region uh, in which it is collected. This means that we need to build our services in, uh, in the local cloud providers. Uh, but, uh, however, uh, when migrating the application, uh, we need to know uh, which provider is the best in the region. And then, uh, in reality, uh, we need to redesign uh, the application for the migration to adapt with that target provider. Uh, we need also, we need to investigate in detail uh, both function and non-function of correct corresponding services. Uh, so uh, it's usually uh, uh, they are costly and very time consuming. Uh, hope that uh, uh, I believe a container technology can be a solution for it uh, by filling the gap between cloud services. Uh, so uh, that's my view uh, for March cloud for, uh, for application deployment. Thank, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I think it's interesting you pointed out some consideration on non-technical, especially like uh, uh, data governance across region that you have to consider. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, let's go, uh, Harada san uh, also like to hear your, your thoughts. Sure, uh, we believe container-based uh, uh, deployment in March cloud in will increase. Uh, there is growing enterprise uh, interest in uh, cloud native container uh, technologies uh, for rapid application develop, uh, development and improvement. Uh, reason for adopting March Cloud uh, include uh, redundancy, uh, risk diversification, AJ backup and recovery, and uh, superior uh, data stack recovery measures. On the other hand, uh, the operation uh, tend to be uh, complicated uh, because uh, multiple services uh, use uh, together. Let me introduce our containerized uh, product, uh, which is called Node AI. Uh, this product enables uh, machine learning with no 
code develop, uh, de uh, development and user, uh, uses a multi-cloud environment. Uh, containerizing allows direct deployment to on-premise or GK or other VMs. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the developer team uh, sometimes struggles to manage a multi-cloud environment. Uh, but luckily, uh, in the Node AI uh, use case, uh, data management is uh, relatively simple. Uh, because, uh, since uh, there is no need to link uh, data across multiple clouds. However, our IoT platform uh, is already connected to much public uh, cloud, so much cloud data integration is necessary. At this point, uh, we cannot share how we how we will uh, link the data, uh, but uh, we recognize that this is this is an issue we will have to address in the future. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Haruza. -san. It seems like uh, you uh, uh, emphasize that multi-cloud is, is uh, important. It's a trend, but also there's some issues that you have to tackle down the road. Uh, that leads me to my um, third questions. Uh, third questions. Uh, it's obviously from the first two questions. We see more and more company are working uh, on container-based application deployment multi-cloud environment. Uh, which means it's not just the data center, but also across the edge, core, and the cloud, right? Everywhere. Uh, what is what is the, your thoughts uh, on you know some of the major challenges uh, you're you're facing or your customer seeing, uh, or you may face in the future? Uh, that's uh, again go back to Kondo-san, if you can help. You know. Sure. Okay. In Japan, the number of companies that use different clouds much cloud according to the characteristics and use of their system is finally increasing. But I think that the container has not yet reached the point where it can be used to divide proceeding among multiple clouds. Currently, it is possible to implement containers in a cloud compatible manner, but it's quite difficult to be compatible with security mechanism, networks, big data, storage, etc. that work together containers. To solve this problem, I think we need to look at development environment services that use dedicated containers as libraries for each cloud and absorb the differences. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kono san. Uh, next, let's have Koyanagi san. Can you help? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that container technology uh, has a potential to be a solution for the uh, multi cloud application deployment. Uh, but still, there is a challenge is that is it has not fully supported uh, for the uh, managed services provided by clouds. We are using many managed services such as serverless like Lambda uh, in AWS, uh, uh, queues like SQS, Streams, like Kinesis. Uh, so currently, uh, there are no de facto standards for them uh, between the uh, different cloud providers, no compatibility in the code level for them. So we need to change the application code to act access these managed services in the, the migration for the applications. So uh, to fully employ the compatibility of containers, uh, we need to have a, a common APIs, uh, infra the code and uh, uh, frameworks uh, that fill the, such a uh, gaps uh, among the large crowd. And also uh, need tools to compare the performance uh, and uh, uh, port tolerance and uh, scalability in the similar cloud services uh, in the different providers. Uh, they are also uh, important things. Yeah, that's my view for challenges in uh, containers and much cloud. Thank you, Kuyana uh, Gisan. Pointing to some uh, uh, challenges you're facing, including, uh, for example, the uh, uh, needs for common API for managed services. 
nice to hear uh, also from Harada-san, uh, uh, your views on the, some of the challenges you are seeing today. Okay, sure. Uh, the technical challenge is uh, that operation uh, tend to be complicated uh, because multiple services and, and use together. Uh, the company may avoid uh, vendor locking, uh, but uh, the differences between the uh, between the various cloud uh, must be addressed uh, when implementing and develop, uh, deploying application. An example is version dependencies. Also, if there are uh, differences in security policies among cloud providers, uh, the company may reduce the overall uh, security strength of the system. As for non-technical issues, uh, few people can think in a uh, much cloud way. So it may be challenging to consider and select uh, architecture for among cloud services uh, that match the uh, characteristics of each product. Uh, to solve this problem, uh, we developed Kumonos Value Stream, uh, which is a DevOps platform. Uh, with Kumonos, uh, application developers uh, can quickly deliver application by uh, using the best practice of cloud architect uh, architectures. Uh, even if they are unfamiliar with cloud computing or CI/CD, while MTT communication is uh, working on cloud uh, deployment this way, uh, we still have a way to go uh, in deploying with uh, much cloud in mind. So I expected uh, I expect the Kumas Bar Stream uh, deployment team to approach the much cloud area. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Harada san uh, it, it seems like uh, uh, at uh, NT Communication, uh, your team not just recognizing these challenges, but already start to acting on it and start to development tools, developing some tools to uh, solve these problems. That that's great. Uh, so that concludes my third questions. My my last question is. Um, ba based on the uh, demand and challenges. Um, we've seen in container and multi-cloud use cases. Um, since uh, you're either a, as a SODA community member or involved in the SODA project activities, uh, what are some of your key expectations uh, for SODA uh, in terms of direction and project uh, and uh, yeah, project directions? And also uh, any s uh, specific area you think we should focus to help you uh, to meet these uh, challenges? Uh, let's go back to Konosan, please. Okay. So uh, as far as all, uh, I meet the, a very, very uh, great engineer in Soda. So uh, I appreciate you, a great Soda engineer. Yeah. And Rajasan, <coughs> Ibu-san, Sagi-san, thank you so much at first. Many companies are now uh, starting to create their own data foundation for their strategies. In order to collect scattered data in one place and make it into one data infrastructure, we need to go through many steps, such as data format conversion and migration. As a result, it will take a very long time. By using Soda Como, data stored in different locations can be accessed as a virtual data lake without being migrated. There is no need to migrate, so the data can be brought together in a very short period of time. However, developers need to provide a mechanism for each application to use the data. I hope Soda will standardize APIs for data transformation and data catalog and so on. So the applications can easily use this virtual data lake. We are excited to challenge together the SODA engineers on a virtual data lake based with Como. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Konosan. Uh, uh, please. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, I want so that to drive uh, standardization uh, of APIs and tools to support multi cloud applications. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I know some uh, soda project uh, already uh, have already started for this area. Uh, for example, uh, Strato uh, multi cloud project provides uh, the common uh, APIs to access storages over multi cloud. Also, the uh, SVK, a storage benchmark uh, kit uh, in the ECHO project, is a tool uh, to compare the uh, performance, storage performance. And also, Delphin provides storage management and performance monitoring. Uh, yeah, I like this project, uh, and I'm happy to contribute to this project to uh, progress. Much crowd uh, supporting the storage management software. Thank you for listening. Right. Thank you. So ne uh, let's go to Harada san. Okay. Uh, the project I am working on requires a project uh, precisely like Soda. Uh, the reason is that the on premise Kubernetes cluster uh, we are running on our project. Uh, has several storage devices. Uh, and consolidating and managing them uh, will help us uh, lower our operating cost. Uh, just, as, uh, just as Azure Arc and Google Ansos can manage uh, much Kubernetes environments, uh, so does Delphin uh, make it possible to uh, manage uh, much cloud storage uh, century. And because Soda has a, a uniform access mode, so uh, no matter where your data is located, uh, you will have less trouble using it. Uh, we wish to grow technologically as more uh, companies uh, join Soda and uh, collaborate more. And in, my, uh, in our another project, uh, we have an in infrastructure for analyzing internet uh, communications uh, that we provide, uh, which received an anonymous, uh, anonymous amount of log data for switches, uh, routers, and uh, servers daily. However, uh, uh, storing a uh, massive amount of log data uh, is uh, practically impossible. Uh, and some of our uh, storage pro uh, products do not support HDFS, uh, however, uh, KubeFS, uh, Soda Eco project, uh, can use the HDFS protocol, S3 and POSIX, and you can expand your storage, uh, which should satisfy uh, data analysts. Uh, since I am not uh, this on this team, uh, I can say for sure, uh, but it is, uh, it is, could be a good candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Rada. So it's interesting you also mentioned some of the project with not developed within Soda community, but uh, they're part of the Echo project. Uh, so it's our mission to be able to provide end-to-end -end solutions. Uh, so that's why we have the Echo project um, initiative that we can integrate and work with other existing projects. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, approaching the end of our session, uh, I want to uh, thank uh, our panelists today, Kenny-san, Kenny-san and Harada-san, uh, for taking your busy schedule and uh, joining us, attending the session, uh, at attending the panel. Uh, so for me, I, I think I, I learned a great deal of, uh, you know, on end users' perspectives on the uh, container and multi-cloud related data storage management, um, and uh, really, and also learning firsthand uh, some of the challenges and, and you are seeing, and also uh, expectation for for Soda uh, that that give us a motivation to continue to work hard and provide solution that you need. Um, uh, finally, I'd like to thank the audience, uh, whether you join um, me physically here or virtually, uh, for attending this session, participating in this session. I hope uh, this discussion will be somewhat beneficial for you. I know it's beneficial for me. Uh, that's it. Uh, so if you want to, uh, uh, new to Soda Foundation and want to learn more about Soda, uh, please, um, you know, uh, learn, um, join us or uh, via Slack, social media, or 
uh, find more information from uh, Soda website and GitHub. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so my question was that, uh, do you have any uh, real use case of cloud replication? Because we are talking about unification of a Soda API or any APIs, right? So if you'll have that feature also, and if you know that the exact real use case of cloud replication, then that could be also one uh, addition point for unification of API. So how do you think about uh, this uh, use case? Do you, have, uh, do you want to ask for a specific? All <laughs> uh, right. So, it means, what is your take on that? <laughs> so, um, uh, okay. So, um, uh, surely. So, uh, you say um, about uh, replication. So, uh, we need that uh, standard API. But now, uh, real time about real time data. Um, um, I think so. Uh, many uh, customer uh, begin to use uh, real-time data, for example, IoT data, uh, to uh, several crowds. So, uh, in this case, uh, we have to collect uh, a variable uh, real-time data uh, on data lake. So, for example, AWS or GCP or Azure, and so on. Uh, in this case, we have to uh, for example, ELT or uh, the mechanism of cache uh, and so on. And uh, if uh, we use, uh, up, we, if we, uh, uh, okay. and if we want to use uh, this data, uh, we have to data catalog because uh, several data are in March cloud. So uh, I want to uh, standard or API about uh, ELT or uh, operating data and so on. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, so the next one. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned in, in that uh, 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 questions, uh, my case is uh, uh, usually a, a migration uh, for, uh, for the uh, legal restrictions. So uh, in that case, uh, replication is not happen because uh, data need to be inside in that country. Uh, but uh, some you, some sometimes uh, we need to copy the data because uh, upgrade the application or something like that. So sometimes uh, hap it happens. Uh, but uh, in my case, uh, usually it's in the the same cloud. Yeah, is is that okay? <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, at this point, uh, I'm not sure uh, about the uh, replication, but uh, uh, yeah, so I think it need to synchronize our, uh, within our uh, IoT platform uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, synchronize the IoT uh, logs or something like that. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.